Nearly every huge dog in the world owes their heritage to one very special breed that started it all. Weighing in at 25 chihuahuas, the Tibetan Mastiff. The Tibetan Mastiff is a massive, big, furry, bulky dog. The Tibetan Mastiff's look is not just for show. They possess the strength and smarts to protect their families and flocks from outside threats. When they were used as, as guard dogs, they would be entrusted with the care of the entire village. A job that the Tibetan Mastiff has had since ancient times, when their ancestors lived with nomads on the high plateaus and valleys of the Himalayas. Some of these tough and intimidating dogs were brought as far west as Europe by the likes of Attila the Hun. Their progeny went on to become the modern Molosser breeds, including the Mastiffs, the Boxer, and the St. Bernard. They're treasured not only for their enormous size, but also for their breathtaking bark. The source of this voluminous voice is found in the larynx, which houses the vocal cords. The vocal folds contract as the lungs push air through the larynx, causing the folds to vibrate at a high speed. This produces the barking sound. Larger dogs have longer vocal folds and larger lungs. That produces a deeper, louder bark. After you hear its weighty woof, the next thing you'll see is the Tibetan Mastiff's heavy muscular build. Those muscles give the Tibetan Mastiff the strength to back up its bark. They have a plumed tail that can curl over and rest on their back and their long, thick double coat is especially heavy on the neck and shoulders. This creates the appearance of a lion-like mane. Its large and striking appearance has captured the imagination of the most populous country in the world, China. It's a surprising new trend in a country where dog ownership was actually banned 50 years ago. But now the Tibetan Mastiff is at the forefront of a Chinese dog fancy revolution. Over the past 20 years, as the Chinese middle class grew from poverty to prosperity, so too have the legions of dog lovers. They now flock to Tibetan Mastiff conventions to see the best of the breed. Today in modern China, owning a Tibetan Mastiff is considered the ultimate status symbol. A large, sprawling villa and a big, ferocious Tibetan Mastiff. That's what it takes to be very rich and famous. In fact, there was a dog that sold for almost 600,000 in China. And one man has followed its meteoric rise from the beginning. Yeah, this is uh, Karma, uh, the first male that we uh, imported. Dr. Andrew Wang is a Chinese-born American who has been a Tibetan Mastiff aficionado for over 20 years, ever since he first laid eyes on one as a young man in China. They're very intelligent creatures, and uh, they are perfect guardians. His mission is to help the Tibetan Mastiff transition from its history as a ferocious guard dog to a modern family companion breed by promoting proper health and breeding standards. So he's heading to China, where canine culture is still a work in progress. Uh, during this trip, I would like to visit my old TN friends and some, to uh, know some new friends. Western innovations like genetic health screenings and pedigree registries remain in their infancy here. And that's a problem for a suddenly sought after breed. So Andrew is meeting with successful Chinese breeders to encourage them to adopt these new techniques. At a Mastiff kennel outside Beijing, Andrew meets one of the few female breeders in the country, Ms. Zhang Ji. Andrew gets a look at some of Ms. Zhang's finest Mastiffs. Hey guys, baby. Yeah, we know you are pretty. He has a very nice muzzle and uh, a wider forehead. They say, ah. <laughs> These face-to-face -face meetings are crucial when it comes to convincing his Chinese counterparts to participate in international registries. That would pave the way for future cooperation between American and Chinese breeders. And Andrew has made a great impression. 
We want to learn their culture, their experience of breeding the dogs, and other good things so that we can preserve them. She also told me, actually made me very excited, more and more people start to realize the significance of the healthcare uh, screening for Tibetan masters. Because they're highly prized as status symbols in China, it's still uncommon to see these mighty mutts as family pets. But in the rural suburbs of Beijing, the Gao family's mastiffs are just that. Kids adopted the baby Tibetan mastiffs they like. They brought up the dogs, so when they have time, they feed dogs, play with them, walk them. I feel happy too, because kids are so innocent. They have their fun. I let them love animals. For Andrew, this is the end game, to help the Tibetan Mastiff survive its newfound fame and take its place in Chinese society as the family dog he knows it can be. The Tibetan Mastiff does best in a cool and dry climate. Their territorial nature means their yard will need a big fence. The Tibetan Mastiff can experience a few specific health concerns. Hip dysplasia, thyroid problems, skin conditions, and ear infections are just some of them. Their thick seasonal undercoats shed heavily in the spring and fall and will require frequent brushing. For about three weeks, your house is gonna be covered in hair. As an independent and often stubborn breed, the Tibetan Mastiff is certainly not for the novice dog owner. Tibetan Mastiffs are loving and protective toward their families, but wary of strangers. To keep a Tibetan Mastiff happy and healthy, you want to be sure you have a cool, dry environment. This long-lived breed experiences many of the common health problems of large dogs, and its thick coat will need your attention during the shedding seasons. It's important to make sure your Tibetan Mastiff gets social experience from a young age, but if you can put in the time and care, you'll be repaid with unflagging loyalty.